So here we're going to look at a few uh, space curves or vector valued functions and take a look at their graphs. So right now we're looking at the graph of this first function, r of t equals 3 minus t, negative 1 plus t, and 2t. And you'll notice that this, it really is the same thing as the line equations we've looked at before. In fact, we could write this as 3, negative 1, 0, plus t times uh, negative 1, 1, 2 right, and have it in a more standard line equation. And so it's not surprising that this graph is a line. So let's take a look at this. You'll notice if we rotate this around, we are getting a line in three-dimensional space. That initial value, that 3, negative 1, 2, is giving us a starting point, And then the negative 1, 1, 2 is giving us a direction. Okay, so now let's look at the next one. So here we're looking at t, t squared, and 3. And so notice that the z value is constant. And so the z value is going to be 3 no matter where we are on the graph. As the x increases, the y is behaving like a squared. So in fact, here we could see that since x equals t, x equals t and y, and y equals t squared, that we could infer that y is going to equal x squared here. Right, so if we look at this graph, so we're going to come over here now, notice that if we turn the graph, we can see that y is indeed equal to x squared, and we're getting that parabola at a constant value of z, right? So this is all happening at a constant value of z, and so this is simply a parabola out, uh, hanging out at z equals 3. Okay, let's look at the next one. So looking at t, t, sine t, we can see that the z value is going to oscillate as t goes on, right? Because sine is going to oscillate up and down. Meanwhile, x and y are going to increase, and here x is equal to y. And so if we were to look at the graph, notice that x is equal to y, giving us the line in x and y. Meanwhile, the z value is oscillating, so as we move along that, the z value is going up and down, giving us this sine function uh, at an angle, right? So lying in the x equals y plane, right? And so there's that function. And so that one we would just call a sine wave or something along that line. Okay, let's look at the next one. So like with our parabola, notice here that the y value is going to be constant. Meanwhile, in x and z, we have a cosine and sine pair. And you might remember from parametric equations that when we get a cosine sine pair, that usually gives us rotation. Uh, so here, uh, we are going to get a circle in x and z with a radius or an amplitude of 3. And so coming over here, you can see that in x and z, we are getting a circular shape with a radius of 3. Uh, corresponding to the amplitude of those sine and cosine functions. Meanwhile, this circle is at a constant y value of 2, right? So if we turn this thing sideways, we can see that y is always equal to 2. And so this one is just a circle out in space at a y value of 2. Okay, next one. So with this next curve, we're getting rotation again in x and y from the cosine sine pair. Meanwhile, the z value, instead of being constant, is increasing. So as the z increases, the x and the y are rotating. So we're going to get a circular shape in x and y, right? So we're getting this rotation going on in x and y. But as that happens, the z value is increasing, right? So as we rotate around, the z value is increasing, giving this shape. Notice that if we were to look in x and z, we should see basically a cosine function. And you can see the cosine function here. Might look better if we turn it this way. So we see the cosine function. If we look in y and z, we're going to see that sine function, right? And so there's that shape. This is sort of the uh, spiral shape, or what is more technically called a helix. Okay, one more. In this last example, the radius of the helix is increasing as the z increases, giving us this sort of conical helix shape.